This week we're in Vicksburg. Why Vicksburg? Because more than 100 years ago there was a huge, huge battlefield here. But it's kind of boring, you know, it's American history, who cares? <laughs> Actually, this battle is very important for American history. Uh, this was the turning point of the war, although it was in 1863 and the war wasn't over until 1865 officially. This was basically the turning point for the North to come back and win the war. Okay, so we are in Vicksburg Memorial State Park right now, which is in Vicksburg, Mississippi, and this is basically a Civil War battlefield. Place, the battle took place in 1863, and it's normally a 16 mile drive that you can do. It's a driving tour. There's all sorts of monuments and it'll tell you where this happened and that happened. Interesting and well kept up. Or you could do it this way. This would be the way or that the, the soldiers experience the park. It's not near the roads. It's back in there and it is not maintained. And in fact, hardly anyone even knows about it because we had to ask three people about this hike before anyone even knew anything about it. And I'm, it's really hot, but I'm, we're wearing these long sleeves and these jeans because I guess there's poison ivy in there. So basically there's no in between. You either do it the driving safe way or you do it the serious hardcore way. But the choice is yours. As much as we like hiking, we're not exactly equipped for a hike that requires a compass, so. Okay, well, um, we had enough of the adventure course, so now we're doing the car course, <laughs> which is much more peaceful. And um, you just roll along here, and there's all these monuments, and you can get audio guides, or I think there's a cell phone guide you can purchase, and it'll just highlight all of the historical facts of the road. Um, basically, you can also walk the road if you'd rather walk it. It's 16 miles, so it's a pretty hefty walk, but if you're up for it, start early enough, why not? The siege of Vicksburg lasted 47 days. The Confederates put up a good fight, but after two failed attempts of full-on assault, Ulysses S. Grant and his Union Army, who had control of the river, cut off all supplies and food going into the city and began six weeks of relentless attacks. The inhabitants were forced to seek shelter in caves and eaves dug into the clay hills and survived on what meat they had, such as mule and cat. Here we are on the, a trench. So as you can see here, they were hiding and fighting through the trench. The park is set up in such a way that you can really imagine what it must have been like. Brian and I maybe got a little too carried away. In all seriousness though, the park feels alive with stories and memories. If you just take a quiet moment to look around and reflect, you will feel them too. This is just really sad. All the multitudes of soldiers and some of them you don't even know their names. Like here you don't even have a name. This is number 5790. After 4,550 Union casualties, and 31,275 Confederate. The Confederate General Pemberton surrendered on July 4th, 1863, an important win for the Union and an event that left its mark on the inhabitants. It's said that they didn't celebrate Independence Day again in Vicksburg until 1945. Now let's go check out the town itself. Situated on the bluffs high above the Mississippi River, the area known as Vicksburg was founded by the French in 1719. However, the French settlers never truly recovered after an attack by the Natchez Indians in 1729 instigated the Natchez War. In 1801, the land came into the hands of the U.S. as part of the Treaty of Fort Adams. 
While most known for the Civil War battle, Vicksburg was a big player in the steamboat era and also witnessed the first bottling of Coca-Cola in 1894. And let's not forget it's part of the Mississippi Delta where the Delta Blues was born. Now it's time to head further south along the Natchez Trace Parkway, the modern version of the old Natchez Trace. It's 444 miles from Natchez, Mississippi to Nashville, Tennessee, once used by the regional Native Americans and then by the Europeans exploring the area. Some parts of the old trace are still accessible today. Um, basically for years and years, people were resting here with the Indian Tavern in the whole plantation. Uh, I'm talking about around 200 years ago and more. So it has been restored to look like it was uh, in the 1820. We'll see if we can sleep here tonight. Emerald Mound, the second largest mound of the country, has been constructed around 600 years ago by the Indians from Mississippi. And I just would like to know how you can construct a mound. I'm trying to imagine the situation with Native Americans conducting a burial here and doing a ceremony in the temple. Well, I don't know exactly how they did it, but I can already feel all the atmosphere. I can see all the Native Americans living and all the culture here in this amazing mound.